Have you heard? Cars are talking now. I know, I know, that's not a new thing, Amelia. But if you had told me when I was a kid watching Herbie the Love Bug that talking cars were going to be an everyday occurrence, I would have told you you were crazy. And second, I would have wanted to know what they were going to sound like. I mean, what kind of accent are we really talking about here? So yes, cars are now talking and they're going to keep talking to each other, to the streetlights, to themselves. And with all this car chitter chat, you know what else has to come along? Yeah, a whole lot of RF. If we're going to continue to innovate in the automotive communication sphere with a little help from cameras, sensors, LIDAR, radar, and the like, we're going to need to investigate every single part of RF connectivity. Hi, I'm Amelia Dalton, host of Chalk Talk. To keep on track with the rise of today's automotive communication, we need RF technologies that can handle high density, high bandwidth, and low latency applications. In this episode of Chalk Talk, Owen Barthelms and Kelly Freeman from Amphenol RF join me to talk about how RF interconnects are going to enable the next generation of automotive applications. And before we get started, don't forget to click that link. There you can find even more information about RF interconnects for automotive applications from Amphenol RF. Hi Kelly, thank you so much for joining me. Hey, nice to be speaking to you. And hi Owen, thank you for joining me. Hello. Okay, so Kelly, we are talking about RF connectors in automotive applications today. So why do we need RF in our cars and how are those needs evolving? Right, so there are a lot of changes in the automotive market happening now. Some key drivers for next generation systems include autonomous vehicles, cameras, vehicle to vehicle communication, and RF interconnect needs to evolve as well. So high bandwidth and high density are key RF technologies that are going to help address those changing market needs. Okay, so before we get very far, historically, where have we been seeing RF used in automotive designs? Yeah, there's a lot of current use of RF technology in vehicles. So a great example is rear backup camera. We're used to seeing those and turn by turn and GPS. We also see those on displays in a lot of vehicles today. Also some wireless functions like cellular communication, and vehicle-to-vehicle communication for what we call ADAS or Advanced Driver Assistance Systems today. But these needs are changing, and some of these systems will remain in vehicles today, but will have some increased capabilities for new technology. So there is a lot of talk in the industry about autonomous vehicles. Now, how does that change the direction we're taking with RF? So just to give a brief definition of what we consider to be autonomous vehicles and when we expect to see them, autonomous vehicles are considered at different levels. So levels two, three, and four we expect to see in the coming few years. So at level two, we have really limited automation with the driver monitoring the vehicle up to level four, which is fully automated in most conditions. So IHS market anticipates that 21 million vehicles may be sold globally in the year 2035 mostly referring to levels three and four, where you don't have a driver necessarily monitoring the whole time. We also want to touch on advanced driver assistance systems. These systems tend to assist drivers with some similar technology. They could also be considered level one, where you have a driver monitoring or conducting most of the driving. So some key applications where RF is used in order to achieve those different levels of automation are cameras, precision GPS, advanced computing units known as ECUs, and then wireless communication for vehicle-to-vehicle or vehicle-to-infrastructure data transmission, which will leverage 5G technology and antennas. And all of the RF interconnect that's required for those applications will be high speed to support the high bandwidth and low latency data transmission. We're also hearing a lot about connected cars these days. How does RF play in that space? So connected car is essentially connectivity to external devices and the internet. So we've seen a lot of those functions in the past with your GPS turn-by-turn, digital displays. That's really advancing to include some different safety and monitoring technologies like driver monitoring cameras that detect driver fatigue and distraction, 
remote fleet monitoring where operators can see video feeds and diagnostics in real time, and then vehicle-to-vehicle or vehicle-to-infrastructure communication as well, which we'll touch on in a bit here. Infotainment and driver information, again, some of these technologies we've been seeing in the past, these are also expanding for user experience, things like Wi-Fi hotspot from cellular connectivity. And some key RF interconnect technologies that are going to enable all these functions include cameras, advanced displays with higher resolution, precision GPS, telematics, and different wireless technologies like cellular and Wi-Fi being incorporated into the vehicle with advanced antennas. Are there applications outside of automotive applications that we could use these technologies? Absolutely. And we're seeing some adoption of those already today. So we see different industrial kinds of vehicles as well as mobile robots and other mobile technologies that are benefiting from these systems. So some heavy equipment is a great example of what's already using RF Interconnect. Equipment used for things like mining and construction, those can really benefit from autonomous systems, especially automotive systems, especially the autonomous side. These applications require a high degree of safety and autonomy can remove some of the risk to drivers. Another example is buses, which are traditionally more automotive, but we like to touch on that because with the adoption of electric buses, we do see growth in that market. And off-road vehicles as well. Some of these are ATVs, while some may be more advanced industrial off-road vehicles. We're seeing an increase in RF interconnect and some of these technology needs as well. So user experience is increasing. We're seeing more displays, more advanced GPS, more antenna content and cameras as well. And then a greater capability to perform in industries like defense and commercial transport. Mobile robots are an exciting application for automotive systems and next generation automotive systems as well. Again, we're already seeing some adoption here with autonomous robots. Many of us may have seen these used in warehouses. They're also being used in retail settings, defense. These will require some of the same sensing technologies and navigation functions as our traditional autonomous vehicle or what we expect to see in an autonomous vehicle. So again, cameras, sensors, antennas, and those advanced computing units are important and are being used today. Okay, let's get back to autonomous vehicles because they're cool. What are the specific technologies that make that happen? Absolutely. So sensors, including cameras, are really the cornerstone of how an autonomous vehicle navigates. We can consider these to be the eyes of an autonomous vehicle. Cameras, infrared sensors, radar, LIDAR, as well as ultrasonic sensors are the key technologies that make this happen. And then we also have V2X communication. So this refers to wireless data transfer between vehicles, so vehicle to vehicle, as well as objects. And there are a couple of key wireless standards that make that happen. These need advanced antennas that will also connect to a central computer. Again, the RF interconnect required here must be high speed to enable that high bandwidth transmission of all these kinds of data back to a central computer. Okay, let's get into some details. Now, you mentioned cameras. Let's start there. Yeah, sure. So cameras are absolutely critical for autonomous vehicle navigation. The cameras used in these systems have to be high resolution and transmit data at a very high speed to get back to a computer for computer vision algorithms. They can recognize all kinds of objects like street signs, hazards, pedestrians, and more, calculate distance and other functions. So today we're seeing between one to five cameras used in standard new vehicle models. And for autonomous vehicles, we're seeing predictions of up to 10 cameras per vehicle. So camera content and high-speed camera content is very important. And we offer some connectors that will enable all of these autonomous camera functions. And we also have extensive capabilities for designing camera connectivity. So we refer to this as rear camera cover interconnect. We offer technology that can enable camera data to easily be transferred back to a central computer via our FACRA style connectors. We know GPS has been used in automotive applications for a long time and in autonomous vehicles too. So how does that relate to your emerging technology? A key difference between some of our past GPS systems that offer our turn-by-turn directions and our next-generation GPS systems, which are absolutely critical for these advanced automotive systems for next generation, are that the new systems can provide centimeter-level accuracy and at an affordable cost. So knowing the exact location of a vehicle at any moment is really critical for collision avoidance and other functions. 
These require GPS antennas and receivers, which again will connect back to a vehicle computer. And we do offer lots of different cable assembly products for that connectivity. Okay, so could you tell me more about why RF interconnect is important for LIDAR and radar? Yeah, LIDAR and radar are also critical sensor technologies for autonomous vehicle navigation. They can detect objects and provide functions including collision mitigation, and these used laser-based detection and radio wave detection respectively. And RF interconnect is sometimes used for these systems to transfer that data back to a computer to have functions like sensor fusion. So integrating that data in with other sensor and camera data in order to run algorithms that enable fully autonomous navigation. And sometimes these sensors will be using RF interconnect to get data back to a sensor fusion system. So of course, all of the different sensor technology has to be integrated to provide autonomous navigation. And sometimes RF interconnect is used to achieve that. So connecting that data back to some kind of a central computer. Now you mentioned V to X communication. How is that different from these other sensing technologies? V2X communication refers to vehicle to everything technology. So the key here is that we're experiencing high speed communication between vehicles and other objects. So vehicle to vehicle can communicate speed, direction of travel and braking between two vehicles, which can enable collision avoidance and more, as well as vehicles to roadside units or even traffic lights for things like traffic light timing for intersection safety. Wireless mesh networks achieve these vehicle-to-everything technologies. So to create a wireless mesh network, we see either a wireless local area network used, which refers to DSRC, which is a wireless protocol used specifically for these purposes, or cellular networks, which will rely on 5G technology. Antennas, of course, are used because these are wireless functions. And for those antennas to connect to a computing unit, we see the use of FACRA, our advanced FACRA products, and many other RF interconnects. Roadside nodes will also be a part of this when we see our vehicle to infrastructure or vehicle to intersection applications. Antenna connections that are outdoors and some cable assemblies we know are used for these as well. Now, I know Amphenol RF is launching a new product line here. Owen, can you tell me more about this and how it fits into these applications? Sure. All of these applications are really driving a need for new, more advanced interconnect. And we have designed our premier product, the Mini Fakra product, to solve two really key challenges in the industry. First is density with ECU modules needing 10 or more RF interconnects per module. There's simply not room to fit traditional FACRA of that quantity on one module. So the high density mini FACRA allows us to fit many more interconnects into a much smaller space. Additionally, with the new sensors and other technologies, there's a need for much higher bandwidth. The future technologies look to need up to 20 gigabits per second of data bandwidth. So this interconnect allows frequency range of up to 15 gigahertz to support that. These connectors can be used in all of the next-gen systems we discussed. Cameras are increasingly important in vehicles. How does that fit into your RF technology? Yeah, cameras are really critical, and we have developed over time some advanced technologies to actually support camera development and camera applications. A camera is typically made up of a front sensor module along with some electronics, and then a rear portion which needs to be integrated to a coaxial line. We have advanced technologies to adapt a standard FACRA or a mini FACRA interface to a rear camera back, which is part of the full camera assembly. What this does is it enables the camera to be integrated into the vehicle in a very small package, for the cable to be routed to that camera, and for that RF signal to be mated with the standard interface and then transitioned down to the optic and electronics with a very advanced, mechanically flexible, and electrically superior interconnect solution that we have for launching the connect, the RF signal onto the electronics. Traditionally, FACRA connectors have been common in RF solutions, but do they have a future? 
Yeah, we have been producing Fokker connectors in support of the automotive industry for over 20 years. So we have a lot of history with the product and the product has evolved over the years. The current generation of product has a very efficient assembly method. So it's much more cost effective and much more robust for high volumes. So while we see in the future there's going to be an advancement towards new interfaces like mini Fokra, Fokra itself still has a lot of applications because of its robustness and because of its availability in the industry. Are there any other products you guys have that are more specialized to address some of these specific applications we've been talking about? Yeah, and while we talk about the Fokra product line, as we look at new technologies, Fokra was originally designed to work really to 3 gigahertz. So we have a special version of the Fokra that actually supports 6 gigahertz, which fits well with a lot of the current technologies, whether they be video signals for cameras or some of the wireless signals or video X communication. We also have a sealed Fokra product line, which fits really well for some of the more challenging applications and locations within the vehicle that Fakra or RF Interconnect need to be placed, like under the hood and in mirrors and in the rear of the vehicle in camera applications. We also have HSD cable assemblies. HSD is another interface. It's actually not RF. It is a high-speed digital signal, but it's still used in a lot of applications today. So we have a supporting product line of cable assemblies in fixed lengths to make it easy to integrate these products into vehicles. A lot of these advanced systems we're talking about use wireless communication. So I'm assuming antennas are involved here? Yeah, antennas have been used on vehicles for a long time, but there is a big evolution occurring with them today. Next generation of antennas are being called smart antennas. And the big change here is that the electronics that are typically spread around the vehicle and multiple control units are now being integrated directly with that antenna. What that does is it brings some new packaging challenges. So the antenna is typically mounted on a vehicle or on the roof portion of a vehicle, and there are now multiple RF signals that need to be brought from the outside of the vehicle to the inside of the vehicle to an electronic control unit. We have a technology called HDEFI, which works very well to connect that antenna from the external location to the electronic control unit on the internal location in a very robust way with high bandwidth to 6 gigahertz. This has been great and a lot of information. What are the key takeaways here? Sure. Infinol RF has both standard products and extensive custom capabilities that address all of these next generation automotive systems and requirements. So some key applications for those are cameras, advanced driver assistance systems, and the next step, autonomous vehicles, including sensors like LiDAR and radar and V2X wireless communication. All of these innovations and new products that we provide are driven by extensive investment in engineering and quality, as well as 20 years of experience in automotive markets and lots of solutions that we've developed in other markets that we leverage over the years as well. Our Automate Mini Fokker line is really key to allowing these new automotive systems, offering substantial density over our traditional Fokker, as well as innovations in the Fokker line itself. So we have evolution to our Gen 4, which offers our cost-effective assembly, as well as sealed Fokker and high-speed 6 gigahertz Fokker. And finally, Camera Interconnect is a key specialization of ours, so we can provide camera suppliers and OEMs with customized, integrated camera packaging solutions that are sealed and ruggedized. Excellent. Well, I think that's all I have time for today. Thank you so much for joining me, Owen and Kelly. Thank you. It was fun. Yeah, of course. Thank you. And before we go, you didn't forget to click that link, did you? There you can find even more information about RF Interconnect solutions for automotive applications from Amphenol RF. For Chalk Talks, I'm Amelia Dalton from eejournal.com. For more Chalk Talks, head on over to the Chalk Talk section of EE Journal. You can't miss it. It's right across the top. Or head on over to youtube.com slash eejournal. <laughs>